Hello, this is Robert Hudson, and this is going to be tape number three of the Qigong series. We'll review material from tape one and two, and introduce new material today, known as Ba Duan Jing, or the Eight Brigades. So let us begin. Start with Zhang Zheng. Do your proper footwork here. Get your stance correct. Bring down heaven. Triple burner. That'll be all we'll review from tape one. If you need to review the material in detail, please go to either tape one and or two. I just want to now touch on tape two. We did the five, uh, the Taoist five. The first one was spleen, looking in this manner. Second one was lung, this way. And third was heart. Fourth was kidney. And fifth was liver. Please review those in tape one and two for further explanation. Today's tape is going to be on Ba Duan Jing or the Eight Brigades. There are some notes enclosed and you can read that, but essentially this is an 800 year old series of exercises that have been practiced since then. And of course, due to that a long time period, they've been modified. They were originally 12 exercises, narrowed down to eight, sometimes still people do 12. Um, and as I've said, you'll see that uh, if you have exposure to them, you'll see they'll be done a little bit different from different instructors. And so the path I'm taking today is a very general path, one that's pretty common and predictable, set of exercises. Each one is thought to stimulate a certain part of the body. And for that, you can refer to the notes, and it's, I offered it there to explain the benefit that they have to the system. First one, I'm going to describe it first. You breathe in with your hands coming up the front, and right about uh, at your sternum or clavicle, turn your hands up. You can interlock them if you want, or put them close together and extend them. It's similar to the first exercise in the Taoist Five, except we don't look up. And we turn and breathe side by side and then close. So here we go, number one. Next exercise is like drawing a bow. You put your hands out like this for balance and stability. You take your left leg and step out, and then your right leg does the same thing and you step out, and you get about this distance. From here, you drop your hands down and they come up. Notice the back leg is straight, and it's like you've got a bow and arrow here. So this is the handle of the bow, this is the string. You extend this arm as you pull this one back 
and you draw it back to the middle. So notice I'm not leaning to this side anymore. I'm in the middle. I pull this hand back to where the elbow is as far forward out to the side as it'll go. And this one, take your index finger up and extend it as far as it can go and look towards your left. So let's go ahead and do one. Now when you want to go the other side, you simply drop your hands, bend to that side, bring your hands up, grab the bow, pull the string back, turn to your middle, and extend. All right. Now let's go ahead and do a couple on each side. Switch to the other side. Bring your left to your right. Get your natural stance. The third one, one hand will go toward the ground or the earth, and the other hand will turn up and go toward heaven, and the arm that's down will look to that side. So I'll demonstrate the whole sequence one time. Now, you will notice in the very beginning, I brought my left hand up like a bowling ball in front of me. I bring it around in a full circle and I bring the right following it, but then I bring my left up and that's how we determine that. After that, it is in this manner, this way. Okay. Let us begin. And close. Next exercise is done by you bring the hands up, elbows up forms level, horizontal, and you wind your hands back. What that'll do is that'll draw your elbow close to your side. You're not going to go much farther than this. And so the action is like this, and this massages and exercises the shoulder joint. And as you do, you look over the shoulder. You do to each side. So I'll demonstrate one time. You bring the hands up, and you look to the side. Bring the hands back, look to the other side, and bring the hands back. All right, let's begin the exercise.
close. Next one, you put your hands back out like this again, and you go back out into your stance. Then you take your hands, you put them over, and you lay them, your hands, on your thighs. From here, you bend down, looking, in this case, to your left, straighten the right leg out, and arc up. Then you bring your head down to that same side, come across your body in front of you, turn to the other side, and arc up. Let us begin the exercise. Next one, we take our hands, our fingers, just below our belly button, we trace a line right there. And what it does, it goes all the way to the back, towards your spine, down your hips, down the back of your legs, and then when it comes forward, it comes in front, across your ankle, and then you bring your hands up the front, and then right along the hip socket, back up to here. And let us begin. The next one is kind of like, you might think of like a martial art action. It's punching, except that it's not really going to be, it's going to be similar. So we go into that stance, but we bring our hands to our sides, and what we do is we punch out, but not with a tight fist, but you do extend it, and you imagine you can see far down the arm out. So we go like this, breathe in. Ready? Here we go. last exercise is called stomping your heels. 
The logic of it is to kind of decongest anything that we've done. So we bring our hands up and drop down on our heels, sort of knocking everything that's congested out. Here we go, we'll do it about four times. Standing. Well, this concludes your introduction to the April Gaze. These can be done once a day or every other day. For instance, now you've learned material from tape one, you've learned material from tape two, and now tape three. It's very commonly asked, well, which ones do I do? It's difficult for me to do all of these. So what I recommend is on the standing is one that you bring in all, and the triple burner and bring down heaven. Those should be in always in the beginning of your practice. Um, but between the Taoist Five and the April Gates, you can alternate. One day do Taoist Five, another day do April Gates. And this is something you can do uh, throughout the week, alternatingly. If you have one that you prefer, do that one mostly. And you can add the others as you go. So we got one more tape we're gonna be doing as our introductory course. And this is gonna, it's going to be called the Tai Chi Ruler. I look forward to seeing you then. Everybody, have a great day.